in review, we've covered a lot already. Can some people tell me what it is that we've already talked about and covered? I'll give a, a hint. The first one that I will do was the Bible scripture of formation. How did we get our Bibles in? Uh, it was the chapters and verses the original thing that uh, how the Bible was written? No. Nope. Does anybody know the year that that actually started? Around the time? Hold on, let me find it. Uh-oh. Somebody's searching notes. Okay, that's good. Also, we talked about the time, about uh, when we actually um, use the word, and I use the example of building. Did you understand more or less really what that was insinuating when we did our study? When you talked about building, you said that you weren't necessarily, the Bible was not necessarily speaking of uh, brick and mortar structures or actual uh, real structures, but um, the church um, as a whole, the people, um, that's what you spoke of on Sunday. That's correct. That's part of it. There's more to it. Anybody else got any more they want to put to it? So if you're looking at my screen, I'm, I'm showing it to you. The symbolism of a building could be in reality, symbolically, or spiritually. So when you use, see the word building, that you just can't jump to the conclusion that Sister Bowman was saying that we talk about a physical building. Also, when you see the word building, you need to make sure. Building, I'm using as an example, but many words. Are they talking about the building, when, where, why, and how? Are we talking about it past, present, or future? This is why I pushed this issue about learning to watch for the chronological order of scripture and where we are in time when you are referencing something. The, uh, the uh, um, prophets especially the major prophets, when they were speaking of something, they were not speaking in terms of what was going on that during that moment in time of reality. But many people didn't understand that, that they're talking about future when they use those words. So you really need to know how to manage that understanding when you talk about uh, scripture, understanding scriptures. All right, somebody give me the understanding of why the Mount of Olives is so important. We talked about how during the time it was used as a it was used as a cemetery mm -hmm. for one hundred and fifty thousand graves over three hundred three thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. For the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things that I kind of like wrote down and some more. And it says that Jesus had been crucified near the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. An olive tree was considered sacred by the Greeks. Mm -hmm. What are some of the uh, history? That in the Old Testament that happened up on the Mount of Olives. Hmm. His teachings. That that's one of them. What else? The Mount of Olives was also considered to be known as Mount Moriah. What happened oh, at, okay. around well, Mount then, Moriah? Then that's where Abraham had to take his son Isaac. That's correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the same mountain of the crucifixion, the same mountain of when Abraham took his son up there where he was going to sacrifice him. There are things and events through history that happened on the Mount of Olives or Mount Moriah. Also, Mount uh, the Mount of Olives is also considered the Mount of Atonement. 
It was a place where Zechariah and Ezekiel prophesied from uh, there for future judgment on Israel. The angels comforted Jesus on that mount. Jesus came down out of the Mount of Olives and entered into Jerusalem on a donkey. And when Jesus comes back, which is in the book of Revelations, we will be going through that. Jesus ascend to heaven from the Mount of Olives. But when he comes back, where is he coming back to? The Mount of Olives. The Mount, the Mount of, Olives. of Olives. Yeah. Also, the Mount of Olives is where we had the Garden of Gethsemane. We also know that the Mount of Olives is also yeah. across from the Kedron Valley. The Kedron, yeah. Ka Ka Kedron Valley is also a valley right there that separated Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives. And last year's study, we talked about the uh, Kedron Valley. It also meets another one. And that's actually where the name came from, Jehenna. Why was that? Because down in that valley is where they threw their trash and everything. And it was always burning, always smoking. And that's what's going to be happening down in the in the uh, lake of fire, Jehenna. Okay. Sister Wright mentioned that about the Jewish cemeteries. Did you also mention that people pay a huge amount of money to be buried there because they think that when Jesus comes back, They'll be amongst the first to get, that are, are resurrected. Yeah, <laughs> that is the truth. Believe me, just give me up. Yeah, I ain't paying no money to be buried in no, no certain spot. But anyway, it might, everybody not, may not feel that way. Also, we were talking about John. What is some of the history of John that we talked about last uh, when it came to uh, John the Revelator? Who is this John? The revelator. Well, that John was the one that they tried to kill several times mm -hmm. by boiling him, frying him, and they <laughs> found out that they couldn't kill him in any of those matches. So they took him to the Isle of Patmos, and they thought that he would die out there starvation or the lack of water, the lack of anything. But when he put him out there, Jesus met him on that aisle. <laughs> yes, Lord. And he performed many miracles on that aisle. And mm -hmm. that's where he wrote the five books. Okay. So definitely the book of Revelation. First and second and third John. And he wrote the book of John. No, no, Sister Wright, thank you very much. Although you added a little bit Very more well. in there that we didn't discuss, but we thank you for the lesson that you just gave us. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's good. Now, John 1 and 9, where we started and we talked about it, we also talked about how over in Turkey, it's amazing that the seven churches that are mentioned in Revelation all are over in Turkey. And we just had an earthquake over in Turkey. Now, that just seems odd to me. But I still get the sound in my ear that the Lord is still trying to tell us something. Pergamus, Thyatira, Sardis, Smyrna, Laodicea, Ephesus, Laodicea, Philadelphia, I'm sorry, Philadelphia, Ephesus, and Laodicea which we're getting ready to run in here momentarily because Sister Wright has already uh, spoke about these seven churches, the seven lampstands and the seven stars. Um, all right, before I go any further, why don't somebody explain to me what they know about uh, the seven lampstands? What do they represent? If you can see my screen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the internet. I'm going to bring that up for you. 
there is a reason. Actually, if you read it, um, B I B L E. Well, now. It's, it's in there on the first chapter. Don't they represent the seven, the seven churches of Asia? Okay, that's the start. That's the right. start, okay. Okay. Did you find it in the Bible hmm. yet? Right there, and that should be in that first chapter. Yes. Let me turn, flip my pages back. Okay, read Revelation 1, chapter 1. And start at verse 4. And let somebody read that for me. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from which from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Keep reading. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Okay, you remember when we talked about we've been washed in his blood? Mm -hmm. That's Amen. where it is. Unto him that loved us and washed us from. Now, it says washed us from our sins in his blood. Washed us from our sins. Which sins did he forget to uh, do that for? Which sin does he need to come back and die again because he missed a sin when he died the first time? <laughs> Excuse me. None of, None. None of them. None of them. He didn't miss no sin. He didn't miss none. Okay. Then how are we able to pick up those sins? Because of Satan's business. Because, because of Satan's what? And being I didn't understand that. Sister Wright, you said because the Satan. We're able to pick it up only because, number one, we do not claim him and have not uh, washed ourselves uh, with his blood and by his spirit. Number okay. two, because we do not claim him to others, uh, so then he dies of flesh. Mm. That's all right. Me, Sister Karen's going to have oh, to bring that's a lesson. I think she's going to bring a lesson. And she's oh, that's correct. Did, did you hear that? The only yes. way you can pick it up that you will never wash free of them in the beginning. Mm. Some people think they can go back and get their sins. You can't go back and get them because she's already washed you free of them. I might have to stay there a little, a little long because everybody doesn't understand that. People think that you can die, be saved today and lost tomorrow. Saved the next day, lost tomorrow because of something they said that, or they did. Anything that you said or you did and you can classify it as a sin, then you're saying that Christ did not die for your sins. The beautiful part about this, and everybody still yet does not realize it, is that when God died for your sins, he died for your sins. But that only is uh, contributed to those who have truly accepted Christ as their personal Savior. They are the ones that is considered to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, which is Christ Jesus. It says he paid the price for our sins. And you just said that there was no sins he missed. So people can't go back and pick up their sins if they have been delivered from them. Satan will try to get you to pick them up. And bring them into your life. 
God said, leave them alone. He has delivered you from them. Don't go pick them up. Somebody get to me. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that are not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Okay. Did you hear what it just said? Read it again. Uh, eight. For by grace. Hold on. How was you saved? Through what, grace. By grace. Were you saved by grace. What's the next word? You have been saved through faith. Keep going. And then not of yourselves. Not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It is the gift of if, God. If you didn't do nothing and you can't do anything to be saved, then what can you do to be unsaved? Nothing. 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 Denominationalism teaches us, oh, you said a curse word. You're going to die and go to hell. No, you ain't. <laughs> Oh, you drank that 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 drink. Oh, you you said some other stuff you should have known. You thought about something. That does not keep you from being saved. And that's what the word is saying. The issue is we need to take the time and grow into our salvation. A child is born, does not come out birth, walking, running, talking. Get filling out job app applications, can't do any of that. When you come to the Lord, you come to Him as a little child, meaning you have to learn how to totally be different than who you were. That doesn't come by somebody just slapping some oil on your head and you falling down and you totally say they're never going to sin again. <clears throat> it's impossible to live without the appearance of sin because God has changed you. It's just like baptism. You are not saved because you were baptized. You were baptized to show the world what has happened on the inside. They can see now by the outside of your expression of who you are now on the inside being a new creature. The Bible says ye must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be changed. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the older a person gets <clears throat> before they come to the Lord, the harder it is for them to transform their mind. Why? You know that statement about you can't teach an old goat, well, they say old dog, new tricks. Old dog, new tricks. Because the older we get, the harder our minds become and set in our ways. It is important to get our children to Christ at an early age so it's easier for them to learn. A child learns easier than an older person does. I'm staying here too long, but I think we need to understand this thing about being saved. If God saved you, then his power is not able to contain you. Then you might want to question your God. Now, let's get back to perception. What hurts our religious walk is not our sin because we are sinless in the sight of God. Jesus Christ constantly is washing, keeping us clean before God. Because even those who think they are perfect, the Bible tells me that in your most righteous stage, you are as filthy, filthy rags, rags 
before God. So you can't do nothing on your own good enough to be saved. But Jesus Christ, our advocate, that's why when the Bible says he's our advocate, means all day long, he is sheltering you, filtering you and your ways out of the presence of God. And God looks through Jesus to see you. This is why we should praise Christ Jesus, acknowledge him, appreciate him. Do all you can to glorify him because without him, your sins would be shown before God. Now, back to what I was saying. Ephesians 2 is letting you know that nothing you did allowed you to receive that gift that Jesus gave you. It's a gift. But what I will be showing you during our course in Revelation, every step and every deed you do on earth is being recorded in heaven. I will show you in Revelations where those who are saved, when you go up before the Father, this is where your works come in place. The Bible says your works will be put up on the altar and uh, of the fire. And if your works were selfish, ungodly, not becoming as one that God had called you to be, if God had assigned you to do something and you refused it, or he assigned you to do it and you took the praise. All of those will be represented as wood, hay, and stubble. Wood, hay, and stubble burns when it's on in, in the fire. But the things you've done on earth, if you did it with a good heart, regardless of people received you or not, might talk to you about you like a dog. You did it for the love of God. When Christ said, love ye one another as I had loved you, if you have fulfilled the commandments that God has asked you to do, then when you die and go to heaven, your deeds, your works will be put on that same fire. But because what you've done was for God and for the glory of God and his word and you gloried in his coming, that is not wood, hay, and stubble, but that's gold and precious stones which do not burn under a fire. So what is left after the fire where God is uh, burning, putting your, your, your works to test in heaven, what is left on the fire you will be rewarded for, you will receive uh, crowns for. The statement he makes, great is your reward in heaven. We need to understand that. When you can see what God is trying to show you on the other side, you won't be so anxious to want to stay here because you know what you got over on in glory with the Lord. Those are the things why I say now, I'm looking for my rewards. I get excited for the opportunity to do good, to show forth God in my life. Because that shows God how ambitious, how anxious I am to do what he asked me to do. And I will be rewarded for it. Now, you said, well, your sins. If you were told to live a righteous life as God told you to do, now you're a child of God. Your father has dominion over you and giving you directions. If you don't do those things which are right and you allow the different sins of the world to be taken up on you, many of the great deeds that you've already done, you can lose them because Satan has stole your rewards. Because now you give up. You give up. I'm tired of those people. I've been in church all my life, but now you're fading away. You're not doing nothing. You're sitting home doing 
not doing anything. Uh, you're not excited about the word no more. You you do those things, those things that you have already worked for, all that that you have put in the bank for savings over on the other side can be wiped out because you allow Satan to dance you around like a puppet. Oh, yeah, you might get to heaven, but you won't receive your rewards and crowns because you allow Satan to steal them here. The power of God can keep you. But you, it takes you and your willingness to participate in God's reward program. Don't let nobody make you trip and fall by doing the wrong thing. Satan only knows how to get to you because he only knows what used to work. So he used the things in your past to try to make you fall in the present. You, As you grow older in the word, you become strong and then Satan has no influence on you. God is just waiting on you to grow up. And we got too many people, Christians, that are sitting in these churches that have not grown up. We got to train them. We got to teach them. When they grow up, they will find out who they are. Satan don't want you to know who you are. That's why he bothers you all day long. Puts things in your way. Make sure you eat the things you know you ain't supposed to eat because then you get sick and you don't feel like praying or going to church. All of these things. Now, nah, well, shut up. Talk to me. Ask your questions about what I just said because if you don't understand that, you won't understand the people who were left here on earth and they're going through the tribulation period. Your turn. And washed us from all, let me say, let's read what it says, <laughs> unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. It's precious. Any comments? We're going to keep on going. I'm going to get down here where we're talking about the can, the church. Verse 11 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Then it gives you the name. Do y'all think there was only seven churches in Asia? No. No. No, no. There's more than seven. That's uh, more but than he's seven. sending more to those seven. churches. Yes, ma'am. There was more than seven. Now, yes. do you think these seven, he mentioned the word churches. Was he talking about a, a location or a building? Well, I think you'd have to cover all three of the areas, the building, the people, because uh, case in point, he says uh, to the church of Laodicea, mm -hmm. uh, you're neither hot nor cold. For that reason, I choose to spew you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. So he's not talking about the actual church building, mm -hmm. but rather the, the condition of your heart. Yes, very good. So it's the, spiritually, uh, physically, and relationally. I like that. You covered all of them. Yeah. The church is in you. But like what we have is a fellowship. This fellowship is known as redemption and restoration. They, during that time, they were going into other people's homes, gathering to fellowship. That's what they were doing in the different areas. Now, you might want to look this up by Sunday. Look at the area. What was going on in Ephesus? What was going on in Smyrna? What was going on in Pergamos? Thyatira? Sardis? Philadelphia? And Laodicea? If you will, 
Look those up for Sunday. You will find, as Sister Karen did just define to you, each of them had something specifically that they were caught up in, in those cities. And one of them, answer this next question, which church was guilty of having Satan's seat in the church? Hi, Kara. Ah, oh, Sister Carrie, they supposed to be studying. Oh, oh. Uh, that's and, all right. And Go ahead. One of the churches is supposed to be caught up in fornic fornication, right? Look at that. Uh, you tell me and bring back the information. Let me tell you something. Okay. I can tell you one thing. Wherever Satan is, you got the whole bundle of joy. Maybe I shouldn't <laughs> say joy because it ain't joy mm -hmm. what the Lord sees. But each one of them had, it was a characteristic of something specifically they were guilty of. And the one that I, I always think about, because Sister Karen just gave out the one about the lukewarm, the Church of Sardis. Who tell me what the Church of Sardis, uh, what God accused them of? All right, bring that back. And I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. All right. So if y'all bring those back, I'm not going to tell you who. You, if you mm -hmm. want to, just get your part and say, which one are you doing? Which one are you doing? You do the opposite one. And that way, you, you know, bang, gang, I don't care if, if, if two or three people are the same one. That two or three different people are gonna bring me something different about that one church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bring it back to me. There's a reason why God called them out. Now, uh, let me see. I don't have my. Okay, look at Revelations verse uh, chapter one verse twenty. Somebody read that. Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. Okay. Um, I have it. Okay. It, it read says, that. Mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. All right. What's the stars? The seven stars are the, the angels. angels. Of the, Who is the, the angels? angels of the churches? Who is the angel? Those are the pastors. That's correct. Make sure you understand it clearly. The seven stars are the seven pastors of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches mm -hmm. this point that i'm making here is if you study intensely you will discover that the bible answers every question within the bible you have to find it it's in there so you want to know who they were? Just like you're going to, the question is always, who's the 144,000? <laughs> Excuse me. You're going to find it in Revelation. It's going to give you the description of who that 144,000 is. That's the type of, you have to study to put the pieces together. They are, it's a thousand piece puzzle. They everywhere. You got to take time. But has anybody ever put a thousand piece puzzle together? So I started and didn't finish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't want a thousand piece puzzle because I don't know if I got enough time or nerve, but that justifies just my very point. The reason some people can't put the thousand piece puzzle together in the Bible is because we won't sit down long enough to put the pieces together. And we got too many people running trying to tell the story and they only got the border of the store, the, the puzzle put together. And, and, you know, and, and why do people start with the border? Tell me that. 
on a puzzle. Why did they start with just the border? Because there's edges. So that all of the center people will fall in place, they think. <laughs> so the, the outline Amen. is easiest, right? Right. Well, that's yep. how so many people study the Bible. They don't want to spend time looking for the truth, so they only put the border together. And then they up running off trying to tell the whole world about a story that they haven't even seen the complete picture yet. It that, takes amen. time. If you can spend it, spend as much time studying the Bible as you do watching the football games, that'll probably work for men. So ain't no men on here. If, if you studied the Bible as much as you watch soap operas, if you studied the Bible as much as you do watching all the season episodes of uh, uh, Black Lightning, uh, Under the Dome, you know, you know, I, I, I guess I'm hinting to you that I don't seen some, but I don't let my TV anymore be seen more than I see my Bible. Uh, can, do y'all follow that? Why do we let Amen. anything yes, in the sir. world before us spend more time in that than we do with the Lord? Somebody said, but I got to work all day. Usually that's only seven, uh, uh, seven, eight hours. And that is ordained because the Bible speaks of it working. But however, that, that demand was not to the woman. It was to the man. Amen. The, 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 the incomplete steps that man is taking, male, male, the one that's supposed to be the head, is not setting the example before his wife and children as who he's supposed to be. That's why Satan could come in real easy and cause conflict because if the man is not in charge of his family, I said it like that for another reason. So I can go back because I got your attention because some, some people are probably saying, well, he ain't running nothing around here or however you might say it. Because originally, God's plan was for man to be in charge of his home over his wife and kids and house. But the responsibility meant he took care of them. He protected them. He provided for them. If he does all these things according to God's word, then he has the right to be the head. But too many of them are not no longer the head. And matter of fact, they're not even the tail. They just cruising along. Satan knows how to play the game and how to disrupt it. So it disrupts the flow of God's uh, family life because the woman was never supposed to have been the head. She was never supposed to have been the provider. She was not supposed to have been the protector. So Satan has all this stuff turned upside down. And we wonder why we got problems. Now, to clear my name, amongst all of you we're grateful that the women who are standing up and doing what is needed god has to well, i won't say he has to but god ordains it because he's lost the power of man's visibility as who he's supposed to be that's why in first corinthians where it says that the head of man is what What's the Bible saying? The head of man is God. The head of woman is the man. Mm -hmm. That's an order. Mm -hmm. Man has, has allowed Satan to trip him off out in the wild blue yonder, leaving the woman unprotected. That unprotected woman, if he's married to her, what sufferings that she go through will be at the hands of the man who left her. It's just Good that man. in some of our churches, men, pastors, especially while they're up there, they have overstepped their bounds too because a woman who is married sitting in the church, that pastor has no responsibility over her. Do y'all understand that? The husband so supposed to love saying? his own wife. Amen. He's the head of her. If she go into the Amen. church and she's married, 
when that preacher going to give orders to her, actually the husband could say, I disallow that mm -hmm. because I'm That's the head that. of her. The only mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. I've heard that had that right was the pastor over at Palestine in Kansas City, Missouri, Earl Abel. He wrote mm -hmm. a book. Here's how he handled that. When he wanted a woman to be over a certain thing in the church, he didn't, the woman might express her joy to do it, but he went to the husband and asked him, yeah, he was could she do it? Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. he gave him the blessing to do that, then the husband is no longer had the authority over her because he gave that up. Why do you think in the marriage, when it comes down, which we've gotten away from, we don't want to go through the vows in, in the church for weddings, it says, who gives this woman to be married to this man? I don't know what they're saying in today's weddings, but who gives this woman to be married to the man? Who is supposed to stand up? The father. The father, really. That is correct. 100%. Father. The father. Why? Because he has the authority right. over his mm -hmm. daughter. If you read yeah. Numbers the 30th, it tells you that the power that the man has over his wife and his daughter. Some men get carried away and want to start telling other women and daughters what to do. That is not your right. You don't have no authority on over no other woman other than the one you married to. Read Numbers 30. So that when they get married, if she does not have the authority of her husband, when she gets married to another man, when she marries that man, she is still not under the authority of the one she married because the husband still has rights over her. When you say mm. give us this woman Question. okay go ahead. So you said Reverend Bradford you said if a woman marries another man mm -hmm. she uh, obviously she has a uh, right of divorcement okay so if she marries another man then the man that she was married to actually still has jurisdiction over her no i okay. didn't go that far i misunderstood i misunderstood i'm talking okay. about the father oh okay of that okay. daughter because actually god stops at that point because he does not acknowledge divorce when the fa the father has to give up the rights of the uh, his rights over his daughter for another man to be able to take her hand out of out of the house. Mm -hmm. That's why he has to give up his rights. Even today, people don't study that correctly because then when they get married, they like their daddy's name, so they put a hyphen between there and and put the husband's last <laughs> name on there. Okay, you better stop. You when you stop. when when you do that, <laughs> what you're saying is, I never let daddy go. But I got another man here. I, I I'm gonna I'm marry, and he's gonna be my head. How can mm -hmm. the man you married be your head when your daddy's the head? You can't have two heads. If you got two heads, you got a monster. Okay. <laughs> Out of appreciation, God is telling you that you have dropped what you're doing now under this authority and now you're under the man of this authority what that is right. saying that the the woman is never without the authority of a man as her head now you're not going to hear this too often because nobody's going to see it that's why the woman the, the the upcoming man has to go to the father and ask for that woman's hand in marriage he asked if he never asked and dad never gave up the authority. You don't have the right. So, so now you want to know why you got so much trouble. Some people say, well, what if I ain't got a daddy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Whoever protected, what's the, what's the requirements I said at first? Who provided, protected, what's the other one I had over there? I said protected, uh, provided for, and what was the other one I said? 
protected. Gave instructions to? Well, whoever the one who took the responsibility for the growth of that child, that could be an uncle. That could be mm -hmm. a grandfather. Another man who steps up in his place can say, I can give this woman why? Because he is invested in her. God is trying to say, keep the authority straight. I want my best friend, John Doe, or in some cases, I've seen women call for another man to be her, her father, stand in the father's place when she's been having sex with him. He's going to give her away to another man to get married. <clears throat> We've lost the, the 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 sanctity of the the spirituality of marriage because we don't want to follow the rules. So when you talk about divorce, Sister Bowman, God never uh -huh. never acknowledged divorce among someone He put together. He never acknowledged so, that. He said because Moses, in the hardness of his heart, mm -hmm. he allowed the writing of divorce. That was Moses' intent. That was never God's intent. And the reason he did that, because when he brought us unto himself, he had never no intent of you ever leaving. That's why your salvation was free. It was given to you because he died for your sins. Somebody had a question. Somebody was getting ready to ask me something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so I got a question. Okay. So, and, and I do follow you. I do remember that um, in, in reading about that and studying, okay, about Moses. Okay. But I guess it's in the New Testament when there are reasons that are given um, that legally justify or biblically you're talking justify. about first corinthians seven chapter right right okay so when that happens that is looked at okay to god am i correct who wrote that that was, was it paul. John? paul i'm excuse me paul and that might be another area to study God never intended man and woman whom he's joined together to be ever separated. Here's the, sure. other, part. Here's the other part of that. Every marriage that goes on may not have been ordained by God in the first place. Right. Just because uh, you say you got correct. married does not justify the fact that you are married in the sight of God. Let me help you again. If marriage is actually why, a, huh? This marriage is why the woman in in seeking a husband, in desiring a husband, needs to go to God. That's and correct. this is why the man who is seeking a woman needs to be needs to find her close right. to God. That's correct. The woman should never be looking for the man. The man should be looking for the woman. That's right. Okay, but even still, when there's a marriage that dissolves due to those reasons that are in Corinthians, mm -hmm. does God not honor and accept that? God never accepts a, a, a divorce, but the way it's written, which is somewhat out of the Levitical laws, then if a woman is uh, uh, divorced from her husband, vice versa they're not to get remarried that's right oh. because they would be uh, committing adultery that's correct that's according to the word that's word but, but doesn't the word say that is the reason that they are allowed to divorce and it, then it's legal then so if the woman say commits adultery and the man divorces her is he not free to get married again that's the way i'm understanding it that he is free 
I, I'm and that slow is the to only answer that, and I think spiritually we need to look at that because a lot of us are governed by. I keep I hate keep putting pastors on the spot, but a lot of them I have to put on the spot because uh, a lot of things are taught and preached in a way to keep them innocent. Okay. Do you and, understand and what pastor, I'm saying? I, I, I do. And, but I'm just going up on my study and in my interpretation of it. And so that's why I'm wondering, is that man not supposed to ever get married again? Is he not free to get married again? Let's put it this way. Uh, who knows the routine for a marriage in the Old Testament through the Jewish laws? Who knows the procedure? Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, first, they, there needs to be a, a, a pronouncement of what we call now uh, the engagement. Okay. And then uh, during that time that uh, they make that announcement, the diary is supposed to be given to the bride's parents. What is it? Okay, what is the diary? The diary is a is a sum of money. That's correct. That should this marriage not work, then this is given. The money is given to the parents, mm -hmm. and then uh, when the marriage does not work, the the woman goes back home to the parents and this is the money that we've heard her it in that term but yes because see when they took the woman out of the home they were also taking bread and butter out of, from that family right. that woman was valuable to that family go ahead sister right, sister karen i know we over time if y'all can hang hang with me keep going sister karen uh -huh. So, so during the, the time that they're married, uh, during the time that they have this engagement, uh, they, they um, participate in um, tradition and, uh, and ceremonial laws uh, where they don't come together. Right. Uh, until the time of the of the wedding, okay. Because the woman must mm -hmm. remain pure mm -hmm. until that mm -hmm. until that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Oh, sorry. The best man the best is the, one, the the best man is the one that is chosen to be at the, the door where the man and woman goes in to consummate oh, yes. their marriage. He That's right. takes a white uh, cloth and puts it on the bed. Mm -hmm. And when he puts it on the bed, then the husband and wife go in and consummate the marriage. After right. they are finished with their consummation, the best man goes in and gets the cloth off the bed and hands it to the father. If there is mm -hmm. no blood on that napkin, she right, was not right. a virgin. A virgin, that's right, that's right. So she, father, could disallow that marriage and actually have that woman stoned because she lied. I'm so what... There's, there's more to it we need to, we need to study it and there's more detail because the even there's there's more to it even about the the father so we need to understand the Jewish laws the more you understand the originality of marriage then you understand more of the purpose of marriage and how marriage is supposed to come about I guess what I'm trying to say to answer your question sister Bowman is that we keep talking about our marriage vows, but many were never married correctly in the first place. God never mm -hmm, acknowledged mm -hmm. a lot of people's marriages. 
Why can I boldly say that now? Because the gays, two men, two women are going down to the courthouse and getting married. Yes, they got a marriage license. Are you going to tell me that God acknowledges that? No. He's not. So then I can also say that everybody that is male or female that gets married is not married. But however, the consummation of the marriage is the indication that when a man has sex with a woman, that's his wife. She will only be, uh, what's the word I want to use? Can be entered or uh, th there's a the, the thin layer of flesh that a woman carries that is broken up on sex. They can only be broken one time. And once a man does that, he is, she is his wife. There is supposed to be mm -hmm. nobody else. So when we want to look at the definition of marriage, we cannot go from traditions. We must go back to the original. What was God's purpose? Mm -hmm. That's why God was so upset about marriage. That's why God was so upset when Israel split to the northern part and then the southern part was Judah. God was angry. Why? Because it was broken. So our churches and our, 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 our marriages, and I'm guilty. And I know, looking back, there was times that I didn't ask God to get married. Shall I marry this woman? And God ain't said me yes. We try to make it sound like because of our decisions, God honored it. No, God ain't honored it. And, and you don't have no right to ask for your help through the marriage either. Because God said, I ain't tell you to go down there and get married. Now you want you don't want, didn't want to talk to me. You don't want to ask me. But now you having all these troubles. The first thing you want to do is cry out to me. I never told you to get married. Mm -hmm. So arranged marriage. But but is once you follow what he tells you, and who he who he selects, and and he blesses that, he will follow you. All the way through that marriage. All the way. He will help you. Here's he my will saying. be there for you. Yes. Yes. And Sister Jerkins, okay. I heard you. Sister hold Jerkins on. Has Sister a Jerkins, yeah. come on. Yeah, right. your head. Sister Jerkins? I think that was her that I heard talking. No, that was me talking about arranged marriages. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Okay. Go ahead, Sister Valora. So arranged marriages aren't, I mean, that's something that, that man, um, I mean, that's not of God, right? I would not say it was because that was things that the pagans did uh, because they were more worried about their lineage, uh, their, their family values, the family structure, who's going to be in charge. So they will pick what is appropriate. And I, the concept of, of that is because young people don't make good decisions when it comes to choices like that. So the father would make decisions on who that daughter was going to marry. Sometimes they did pick them that I know of, but I know I don't find that uh, to be valid in the scriptures nowhere. If somebody else can find it, you bring it to me and we can talk about it. Y'all still there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your yeah. question. Yes. We're over time, but yes. you're free. Mm -hmm. So we we well, have to be... Go ahead. So Reverend Bradford, all of us, I won't say all, but there is only a small percentage of people that fall under that actual God uh, ordained marriage. There's so many people, women that may have been raped, they may have um, been in arranged marriage or just different, all different kind of scenarios. Some people have gotten married uh, two and three times again and uh, some people have been divorced and want to get married. So I, my understanding and you know, just okay, is that God provides a way of escape for all of our situations. That's why He died, 
And so mm -hmm. anyone that may have fallen short of that original uh, way that uh, marriage was to have been done, he provides grace because we're under grace now for that. So my, my question is still, um, is it okay that a man would be free to be married again or vice versa a woman be married yeah free to marry again and god would honor that i would have to say knowing who god is yes because there's something about the word forgiveness repent yes. uh god honors that he set up that yeah. repent he set up this thing about forgiveness He's the one that set up forgive 70 times 70. He's not mm -hmm. going to give us a command that he does not honor. Right. Because some of the things you just but said, at the I'm same time, out. Pastor, look at this. Come on. Okay, so you have forgiveness for that marriage that you selected and it ended in divorce. But then you turn around and you marry again. Mm -hmm. Did you go to God? And see, for and I'm guilty of that, Sister Karen. And why? Because nobody ever explained what I'm talking about. And that's why it's so passionate to me, because I had to go learn what the Bible says, because the things that I got from man did not add up. You got to study. Well, Find these I, things out. Uh -huh, but even if you didn't know, Reverend Bryford, mm -hmm. God knows. Uh -huh. Yes, God you know. knows, even if you didn't know. And his way of grace was already there for you. That's why repentance. I was going to take it all the way to the end because I need to fill okay. in the gap. But repentance. What sin is an unforgiving? Now I'm going to open this up to another subject that there everybody, everybody wants to say. What is it's the blasphemy. unforgivable? Okay, what is blasphemy? Blasphemy. What is that? You lying against the Holy Ghost. Right, right. Not one hundred percent right. There's only two occasions. Okay, but it's not so much lying two occasions. against it, but but two so occasions. Uh, the the Sadducees and the Pharisees said it themselves. One was when a man called himself God. Mm -hmm. That's blasphemy. Yeah. The other mm -hmm. one is when oh, you say fair. that you can forgive sin, that's blasphemy. Because they tell you that the only one who can forgive sin is God. God. The only one that can be God is God. And for man to claim to be God, that's why they got mad at Jesus because he he didn't they they say, Well, what you're saying, you claim to be God. And Jesus will say, You said it. And he was God. And the Pharisee says, that's, right. that's blasphemy. That's the only two times mm -hmm. I found. Now, some people say lying to the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't know if you can lie to, uh, to someone you don't know. Huh. There's people cursing God. Well, but can't you look, at the, look at Ananias and Sapphira. Okay, wait, okay. They that was not blasphemy, but they lost their life. It sure did. They lost they their life. Don't don't play with the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Don't play with the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't, uh -huh. the, the, don't. that and you good example. Don't lie because both of them connived to say the same thing, which you were lying. And and who was that? Peter mm -hmm. said that why did you lie against the Holy Ghost? He already knew right. before they even got there that you were going to lie. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about yeah. in our hearts, what we're going to do for somebody, and you never do it, Sister Slane. Sister Slane. Yes. Uh, it just convicted my heart. There's two things I said I was going to do for Dr. Tyrona and Dr. Linda uh, Rhonda, and I ain't done it. Now, I don't spoke it, and I need to get it done because I don't want to be guilty of lying. <laughs> To the Holy Ghost, so let's get this thing done. <laughs> okay. So, but yeah, don't. It's better not to say a word than to speak and 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 be deceiving. Don't don't be that. People who lie and deceive and hurt a lot of people in the church, and they mm -hmm. call themselves Christians. Right. 
they chew you up worse than some of your worst enemies will do. But yes, oh, forgiveness is important. So when you realize that God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son down here so that he can protect you like that, why wouldn't you want to say, thank you, Lord? Why would you not want to mm -hmm. pray and ask to say glory to God when you realize how devastating you have been and have become, why can't you just say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's all Jesus wants to hear. I'm sorry. I repent. Mm -hmm. Lord, please forgive me. You do all of that. That'll make the Lord forget anything else. What does the Bible say? Say that and when you talk about how people treat you, the Bible says it is better than, for a milestone to be tied around your neck and thrown into the sea than for one of them to offend one of these little ones. People will lie on you. I don't, you don't have to fight your battles no more because every time they mess with you, your daddy going to get mad and he will go take care of business. Some of these people that died, they may have been mistreated you. People who lost their job might have been because how they treated you. Reason they, they seem like they, what they call bad luck all the time, it might be because how they treated you. That's why it's best, if you can't do right unto people, leave them alone, especially if they are a child of God. If they're a child of God, don't mess with them. Even if you think they're wrong, it's not your Amen. business to, to, to correct that. Leave them alone. It is better for God to take care of things. and Because there was a guy who uh, I worked with, and he kept doing wrong and saying things to me when we working together. And this is a prime example. Don't get revenge. Let the Lord fight your battles. I'm at home sleep in my bed, going to work the next day to only find out this man is already in the hospital from yellow giantess. Now, how did he get that when he was just cursing me out the other day? When the Lord moves up on you, God take care of your business, and they can't say Al did anything. I ain't done nothing. I'll sleep <laughs> in my own bed. And this man comes up sick. You got to be careful. And what you, your word is you want to tell everybody, don't mistreat God's people. I can't think of a quicker sure. way for you to have misery during your days. Sickness, heartaches, and pains will flood your soul messing with God's people because God is not going to allow you, his child, to be mistreated by those out there in the world. He ain't going to do it. That's right. That's right. So when we talk about marriage, that's how we got there. If if, <laughs> if you went with a pure heart, the, mess, the best thing you could do is make sure, without a doubt, tell your brothers, your sisters, or aunts, whoever it is, you better make sure God said for you to do this. Because once you get married, the pains of that marriage never goes away. And when it looks like it's in the background, there's always somebody to remind you where you've been. So be slow. Don't be in no hurry. Don't be in no hurry. Leave, that, leave it alone. The, the biggest thing that makes a lot of people get married today is sex. Ain't no young people on here, huh? <laughs> it's sex. And in you, when you're in your prime time of life and your sex drive is high, that gets more people in more trouble than anything because then they end up with people that they really don't want because the sex and then they, out. And then they always saying, then those same people that get married young say always saying, well, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. Uh, that, yeah, that, the Bible does say that. The Bible <laughs> yeah, does say that. Yeah, but that's not what it says, that, but that's but, not what it's referencing. That, that's true. That's true. Ask Paul. But I'm just saying, I've heard so many young people say, you know, when they're, especially when they're getting married, you know, for sex or lust, that, that they bring that up. Okay. So it's better to marry than to burn. So you're going to go get married to an elephant or a donkey or or something there that they have nothing to do with, and you're going to go up there and, and enjoy yourself. Let me tell you something. Let me, read the story between David's son and his sister, how he begged and, and craved for his sister. But after it was over with, 
Look at how he treated her after the sex. Y'all remember that story? Uh -huh. Read that story. The sex drive. Please read it because it's in the Bible. It's in there. And his and the way he treated her, he acted like she was the, the only person, the best thing in the whole world. He loved the word using it. He loved his sister. He lied and did everything he could to, to pretend to get her. And then once he lay with her, treated her like she was the worst dog in town. Judy? And like she committed the sin and the crime, not him. It's in the Bible. There's a Get lot we yourself. have to learn. So, and, and if you pray, pray earnestly, God will show you things that I can't answer because I don't have an answer for everything. But God, the Holy Ghost in you, it has an answer because the Bible said he leads you into all truth. Amen. So whatever you think is Amen. right, you do what it is that you believe that the Holy Ghost inside of you is leading you to do and don't make no mm -hmm. amends for it. Mm -hmm. And we went a long way from the church, but... <laughs> I think it's all good if you guys take to heart what we talked talked about. I'm asking every one of you that one of them churches and study about it, bring it to us on Sunday. And I want you to look at the the reality of what's going on and look at how spiritually it, it's important. But to remember at the end of every one of those churches, God says, but and then bring that that answer. He had an answer for each one of those churches. He Except for said, one. There's only one church he didn't have a butt for. He said, he that has an ear, let him hear. But <laughs> the Spirit said to the church. Okay. He that hath an ear. Who don't have an ear? Those Everybody that are in their own own. Everybody got an ear, mm -hmm. but everybody can't hear. That's right. Spiritually, inside of you, that spiritual ear has to be he to hear, but you can't have a spiritual ear inside if the Holy Ghost is not in there because you won't understand Amen. what you're Satan knows every Amen. word in that Bible. It does him no good because What's the Holy that? Ghost does not reside within him. Hallelujah. I'm sorry we went over time, but I think you guys wanted it. Y'all hung with me. And I don't think nobody. Amen. Lived. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sister Karen, Dr. Karen, pray us out. Yeah. Pray us out. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we always come excited, wanting to know more about you and your word, Father, because it gives us uh, to know your characteristics and your ways and your integrity uh, and so father god as we have studied this evening in regards to revelation and other subjects we thank you father for illuminating our path for your mm -hmm. word has been a light unto our feet and a, a light on our path yeah mm -hmm. a, a lamp unto our feet and a light on our path and so father god we thank you we bless you um we ask heavenly father that you continue to walk with us please lord uh, let us know, Heavenly Father. Bring more of the light mm -hmm. into our path, Father. Yes, um, uh, take us out of the darkness, God, so that we can share more. Uh, we can uh, imitate, emulate, co-create with you because of your lightness. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank bless you. you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Happy Good night, Valentine's Day to everybody. I love every one of y'all. I wish I had a heart <laughs> big enough for that and that would in, uh, in, enclose every one of you, but I don't, but I can in spirit. Praise the Lord. Thank you all. God loves you and so do I. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Love you all too. <laughs> you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. All right. Thank you too, Sister Lord.